subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hiral Dadia. We have with us Sachin Bandeshali, Director and CEO at Gateway Rail Freight, joining in. Welcome to the show, Sachin. Pleasure to speak to you as well. And I hope everything is fine at your end with colleagues and with family. Uh, thank you, Hiral. Um, uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this interaction, uh, um, uh, which was proposed by you of our uh, Nirmal Bang. And... Uh, here in Delhi, it's quite cool, uh, but at the same time, uh, the, the numbers are going down. So generally, everyone is hopeful that some kind of stability as far as the COVID situation is concerned is there. As far as the industrial uh, uh, atmosphere in, India, in, in Delhi is concerned, Delhi and around North India, uh, I think we've come back to normal as far as activity is concerned. How are things at your end? Absolutely good. Working from home, and I think that's what is expected to continue. So all safe. Thank you so much. Sajid, let's start with the conversation with regards to the impact that COVID has led with regards to the business as a whole, because no sector, none, no economy has been left untouched on the back of this. Clearly, if you go to see with regards to where logistics was concerned, that was a crucial uh, activity that was needed, may you say, for the supply chain of raw materials, or even for the matter, for that matter, of finished goods or supplies to houses. Now, when you talk of the logistics sector as a whole, how would you actually describe the transition from the lockdown to now? Uh, okay, now I would like to see it a little differently. Mm. Logistics service, whether it is inbound logistics or outbound, outbound logistics is basically makes what manufacturing consumer. Mm. Without logistics, it is not possible right. to, to manufacture uh, either industrial goods or consumer goods, mm. nor is it possible to take those from point of manufacture to point of consumption. So the space utility, which we learned classically in uh, uh, the economic theory, is something which is brought in by warehousing, storage, and uh, distribution, uh, apart from transportation. So uh, I think uh, the COVID impact which came in primarily hit the road transportation segment immediately because I think India uh, laid a great emphasis on closing down life on street immediately when uh, uh, it was suspected that we might have a big pandemic uh, uh, situation in India. So this resulted into a lot of truck drivers not being available and mm. uh, switching off the road segment of the total logistics space actually makes it difficult for it to be completed. Uh, ocean transport and rail transport are incomplete transportation unless the first mile and last mile is done by uh, uh, road transportation. And non-availability of drivers resulted into tractor trailers as well as trucks, the lorries as we call them, being not available for the purpose of this first mile and last mile. Uh, in our business, in the uh, exim business, uh, uh, imports continue to uh, come in because imports normally have a sensitivity of anywhere between 30 days to 90 days depending on the ocean journey. Whereas the exports have a sensitivity of just about 7 days. Mm -hmm. so whatever had already come to our terminal was alone that could be exported and if all other exports kindly got stuck at the manufacturing or warehousing location. Mm -hmm. So this resulted into quite a big mismatch between import and export in the first two months of April and May. Uh, uh, the rest of the logistics industry, which caters to both the international and domestic space, mm. went through a similar uh, uh, crisis. And uh, as far as the domestic industry is concerned, there is a large amount of raw material transportation which takes place within India, apart from what comes from the port, as well as the uh, manufactured uh, uh, goods, whether it is uh, uh, consumer durables or let's say automobiles or consumer products. Similarly, industrial assemblies as well as industrial goods which are to be used for the purpose of production. All those could not be taken to their logical destination. Mm. So there was, there was a disruption of the economic activity in the first two months. That of course got reflected in the GST collection which we saw for the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, the the quickness with which it could have come back probably could have been helped by way of uh, rehabilitation exercise for the purpose of uh, drivers operating tractor trailers and uh, trucks. Mm -hmm. That's where I think there's, there was a little bit of gap from uh, uh, both from the uh, private sector as well as public sector at the government point of view. That delayed it almost up to mid of May. But 
end of may onwards we have seen practically all industrial units coming back one by one to a uh, normal level of activity right so so with this you know what were the challenges that you faced as a business uh, you know because once things started coming back on track say from may onwards uh, a lot of challenges that were faced on the back of supply chain side uh, as a sector what were the issues that we faced okay so uh, here the uh, uh, transportation chain depends on complete transportation chain so you have to go for, forward as well as come back in order to complete the chain so there was a disruption of that took place so the cost of operations actually shoot up through the uh, roof because of that fortunately indian railways uh, immediately stepped in and the uh, uh, the charges that are levied by indian railways for transportation of empty containers or for empty wagons those were waived off for a period up to 8th of may mm. so that came in quite handy without that it would not have been possible to evacuate the imports which were lying at the uh, various uh, uh, mm. gateway ports on the western side that is mundra port pipao port and nawashawa port these three ports are main gateway ports for india the second thing was to get uh, uh, drivers for running our trailers we operate almost about 400 tractor trailers ourselves in order to provide first mile last mile uh, service to our customers that's where uh, uh, all the drivers had already left for their home place and they had uh, while we had actually tried to make an effort to ensure that they are provided with accommodation as well as food at the location where they work mm. but the scare, scare was so severe that all of them practically disappeared from those locations and just went back to their home uh, to be with their family so the second challenge was manpower getting the manpower back to work third was that uh, the customers were not prepared for this kind of uh, uh, i would say disruption in the supply chain from their production point of view as well as they faced a crisis of non availability of manpower for starting uh, uh, restarting their economic activity mm -hmm. so there was a lot lot of cargo which actually got stuck at our terminals which otherwise should have been flowing uh, by way of a normal supply chain inbound supply chain for many various industries so we were left with no space though we normally operate not more than 50% capacity utilization of at our terminals we were operating at 120% capacity utilization so so not only we were theoretically full but we had gone beyond that theoretical 100% where the inefficiency had started coming in which also resulted into cost of operations going up for us we were able to uh, uh, get our act together quickly we started our office uh, from the uh, 4th of may uh, which was just about a, gap, a lag of a week and all our terminals also started operating from 4th of may hmm. so that's where we we started attracting people back we started taking a lot of precaution and we fortunately have a, a, a reasonably good record of very few number of reported cases of uh, 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 covid positive both amongst the driver community that works for us as well as other uh, uh, employee pool that uh, we all of us operate from mm. so the, the the third the third challenge as i said was motivating uh, people to get back to work uh, the industrial part of it is that uh, everyone expected that during these extraordinary crises uh, we should not levy any storage charges whereas storage charges is something that we uh, it's it's like the Uh, uh, rental which you pay when you stay in a hotel so these mm. are like container hotels where when whatever content time is spent by a container at a terminal will come at a very small price but yes a per day price so industry expected that we will not charge them anything so we ended up uh, uh, being mindful of that we ended up giving up a large amount of our revenue for the first quarter and during that quarter uh, 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 some amount of accrual did take place i think Uh, from an overall point of view it was not a great quarter quarter but not a bad quarter another thing which crept in is that confusion which was created by uh, the ministry of shipping by issuing a, a notification saying that uh, uh, no ground no ground rent or storage charges will be levied on containers whereas actually they, what they meant was that at the port locations where those were it, those were built on government land all yeah. icis are built on private land and those are like warehouses and if you stay in a warehouse you will have to pay the ordinary price so what we did is that there is always an element of penal charges in order to dissuade people to leave their cargo with us for a longer duration uh, uh, period of time so mm -hmm. we practically waived it off completely and only the standard charges were, were collected by us so that was the encouragement that we gave to industry apart from that there was one more thing which we faced is that this resulted into 
the import and export business going into a, some kind of a seesaw situation. So suddenly exports went down. We had only imports. Then once the impact of uh, the uh, uh, COVID restrictions in India was felt internationally, the shipping line started closing the tap on India market. So the imports started coming down. By that time, the drivers had come in, manufacturing activity had started, the exports started going up. Then we had a situation of export surplus over imports, which is very mm. unusual. Then again, imports started coming back. Then we came to an equilibrium. And now I think in quarter three uh, of uh, FY 2021, now we are back to our normal uh, import surplus over export situation that we have in India. Right. So, so with this, you know, how was the trade receivable cycle been? Because logistics as a sector, what I was hearing was that that was something which really got disturbed. Okay, so I'll tell you the financial angle. Financially, three things happen. One is that uh, your revenue is not accrued until you complete the service. Mm. So, and and uh, even after completion of the service, uh, unless the container gets delivered, the cargo gets delivered, the invoice doesn't get generated because that invoice will have, as you are aware, handling charges, storage charges, as well as transportation charges. So all these three will be charged only once the container is uh, delivered. Mm. So the huge inventory that we sat in the month of April and May resulted into our uh, daily sales uh, 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 average, what we call DSO, daily sales outstanding, going up from a level of about 30 days to about 45, 50 days. Uh, in fact, towards the end of the month, we had something like 55 days of uh, DSO. Uh, then, the financial uh, tightness in the market or with the uh, 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 customers itself started resulting into delayed payments. Mm. <coughs> so we did have a quite a bit of uh, tightness as far as our working capital management is concerned. But once the monetary package came in wherein payment of EMIs uh, as well as payment of uh, um, uh, loan installments, etc. was deferred during the first quarter by uh, Reserve Bank mm -hmm. of India or recommendation by the banks which were lending to this sector. Uh, the it, it, it was possible for us to tide over uh, uh, that period as well. So I think the uh, trade receivable cycle came back to somewhat a normalcy only towards the second uh, month of the uh, second quarter. So I think uh, uh, somewhere around end of July, beginning of August, we kind of came back to a normal level. Right. And then with this from here on, a lot of opportunities have come in for different businesses. Strategies have changed for different businesses on the back of COVID. So if you have to talk about a gateway district park, taking into consideration CFS as well as uh, the railway side of it, how would you describe as to which segments of business would be revenue growth? Uh, for example, from gateway, the CFS side of it, if you talk about handling and transport, warehousing and other VS services, and from the railway side, if you have to talk about rail freight or terminal handling and storage charges and road freight, how would you say, you know, which segments would be growth drivers from your own, according to you? Okay, so uh, if we look at these two businesses, CFS business and ICD by rail business, so CFS by road business uh, uh, had uh, resulted, had undergone a metap metamorphosis wherein because of direct port delivery, the market had shrunk. Almost 50% of the containers were being directly delivered from the port. And there was no need for these containers to be brought for customs clearance uh, to CFSs. So the market had shrunk. But during these times, because of non-availability of transport, the port started getting congested. And the port authorities then insisted that these containers should be cleared and blocked by various uh, CFSs. So we brought those containers and kept with us, which ordinarily would not have come to us. It resulted into demonstrating two things. One is that it gave a little bit of a revenue opportunity for us. Simultaneously, it also resulted into customer realizing that unless there is a logistics component in the solution which is being provided by way of DPD, it would be difficult for them to tide over difficult situations mm -hmm. like this. So a lot of DPD customers, which were doing directly from port, have started bringing their DPD containers through our CFS, at least to ensure that the relationship exists, etc. So this mm -hmm. was the first opportunity to get there. As far as the ICD business is concerned, ICD business practically continued as business as usual. There we did not face any, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, market upheaval as such. But it also resulted into the industrial units, particularly the larger industrial units which are into automobile manufacture, etc. Or let's say steel, uh, uh, specialty steel and alloy manufacture, etc. Mm -hmm. They started realizing that importance of an ICD in maintaining their supply chain is an extremely important component. So I think there is definitely a, an improvement in the respect that they have 
for the kind of work that we do uh, it hasn't resulted into a revenue opportunity as far as the rail business is concerned but since visavi road rail has mm-hmm. performed during that time uh, uh, absolutely without any uh, let's say gap or failure uh, mm-hmm. there is a distinct shift from road only businesses road only customers to doing at least a part of that business with rail i think these are the two opportunities which came out of uh, uh, the impact of covid restrictions so it did result into i would say fundamental shift in belief that road is more efficient and um, uh, economic as compared to rail so uh, the uh, the logistics sector particularly the rail based logistics logistics sector has been able to prove that we we we, we stand in good state in difficult times as well hmm. on the cfs side there was a, there was a bit of storage income that we could earn during that time so our storage income went up which more or less compensated for our uh, 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 loss of business particularly in export direction similarly in icd business also we got a little bit of uh, income by way of storage charges imbalance was taken care of by indian railways uh, concession of not charging any uh, uh, rail haulage charges for the empty containers and empty wagons so overall economics did not kind of bother us so much but the amount of effort which went into restarting the rekindling the flame restarting the uh, cycle once again both for our customers as well as for us i think was quite compelling uh, in terms of revenue i think first quarter and the second quarter put together we just marginally about below uh, these are publicly available numbers so we just marginally below our uh, yoi numbers and i think the uh, the way it is going things are not going to be too bad because we clearly see that there is a resurgence of the resurgence of demand in the market particularly for private uh, uh, transport entry level private transport whether it is two wheelers or four wheelers seems to be quite strong that means the assemblies which come in for that raw material which comes for those businesses in import direction is kind of uh, 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 again formed up so on the whole i think the mm, non fmcg consumption story seems to be unfolding unfolding and and any in any uh, non fmcg particularly in industrial goods as well as manufactured uh, uh, consumer goods uh, if you see a resurgence then it also requires a great deal of new investment coming in so mm. if it continues on a sustained basis there is a good chance that it will attract more investment more investment would mean more imports more investment would also mean that uh, i think the industrial output would go up so the aggregate demand i think is is showing up uh, uh, firmness uh, second quarter onwards so it's, it, i i i think that's something that to look forward to i think recovery would be much faster than we expected it to be right and then with this uh, on the back of the restructuring what's the update on that front now where are we on the process okay so the idea was basically that you uh, know if you look at the businesses that we are in container freight station business which is by the side of the port and the icd business which is uh, rail transportation of those containers and clearing those for hinterland in the icds the business remains the same it is intermodal business it is basically delivery mechanism for the shipping line to conduct their international business in india if you can put it in one line uh so while uh, the rail business was started as a separate business for certain economic reasons there was going to be a private equity investor and then uh, that private equity investor later on exited so there was a strong case to consolidate these businesses together so we have three entities gateway uh, 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 gateway district parks east india limited which is based out of visakhapatnam then gateway mm-hmm. district parks which has got five terminals at various lo- uh, different locations we have one own and one op- op- operated terminal in uh, navasheva we have mm-hmm. one in chennai there were two in chennai but we sold one of those we have one in krishnapatnam visakhapatnam one which is uh, operated through uh, that subsidiary these two would collapse together and then gateway district parks limited which is listed entity will mm-hmm. become a part of gateway rail freight limited okay. and yeah. it will basically be a merger of, uh, of these two entities with the merged entity being a listed entity mm-hmm. post so uh, as far as the process is concerned process normally goes through uh, uh, stock exchange uh, uh, approvals sebi approval and uh, nclt approval so we are almost towards the end of our sebi uh, uh, approval once this is done then we'll move to the next and final stage of uh, uh, taking our case for merger to uh, the uh, uh, national company law tribunal and once that is done the, then the merger will be with effect from 1st of april 2020 that will be the appointed date so the current financial year would basically be treated as a consolidated entity so this brings in quite a few advantages in terms of uh, the group as such 
So the first advantage which comes is that uh, while you are dealing with multiple customers at multiple locations, now there is only one entity which will deal with those customers. Mm -hmm. number, one. number two is that at all these locations, our methodology of operating the terminal is similar. So mm -hmm. the, the, there is a container yard, there is a warehousing space, there is an office from where transactions are uh, uh, handled. And then there is handling equipment for containers and cargoes, which ensures that there is a fluid, uh, smooth flow of cargo into the terminal and out of terminal to ensure its international schedule. So the methodology being same, it would be possible for us to consolidate these businesses and kind of get a synergy of operating from various terminals at the same time servicing multiple customers from all terminals under a single umbrella will help. So that is the first main advantage which comes mm. in. Mm. The second advantage which comes in is that the growing business is real business. So uh, while Gateway District Parks has plateaued off on account of uh, the DPD business which I mentioned to you, uh, Gateway Rail is a growth area, and if Gateway Rail has to grow, then the, 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 the rail segment has to be kind of given a prominence. So that was another reason why the uh, rail company is going to subsume the other two companies. Uh, the uh, growth of intermodal business in India is significantly moving away from the port. Ports are saturated. Industrialization in and around port is also uh, kind of come to kind of plateau. And while the growth in hinterland is still uh, uh, on, so you have North India, which is divided into basically three segments, NCR proper, uh, Punjab, and the rest of North India. So these three are happening places as far as North India is concerned. Then on the Western side, you have the Gujarat cluster. You also have the Western Maharashtra and Central Maharashtra cluster, mm. which goes all the way up to uh, Nagpur. So these are the locations which are going to get benefited once containerization in India increases. So internationally, you see almost 80% of the break bulk cargo is containerized. In India, this percentage continues to be somewhere around 55 to 60%. So there is possibility of growth even without there being a regular growth of the economy. So even during difficult times, we saw that the percentage actually went up rather than going down during difficult times. Yeah, so penetration of containerization of break bulk cargo is something which is going to help us by consolidating these businesses. Right. The, the other advantage which comes in is that the uh, currently if you see the debt is sitting in uh, Gateway District Parks Limited while the, uh, uh, the surplus of uh, 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 surplus is being generated largely and is growing also in gateway rail business. Mm -hmm. So availability of that cash for the purpose of servicing of debt, which is uh, uh, which was for the purpose of uh, acquiring uh, the uh, private equity investment mm -hmm. company, uh, we had taken three five hundred fifty crores of uh, uh, NCD from various uh, NCD holders, mm -hmm. out of which we already paid back two hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. So balance and it has to be serviced and it will be easier for us to service it out of combined cash flow. It mm. would not have been impossible for us to service it out of Gateway District Park's uh, 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 cash flow. But then it would have meant that the listed entity would be left with hardly any cash from the point of view of uh, uh, the shareholder aspirations, as well as from the point of view of the rest of the debt which is there in that company. Mm. Mm. So, mm. All in all, basically, idea is to convert it into a single pot and make it more efficient, whether it is marketing side, whether it is production oh, and operational right, side, right. or whether it is from the point of your financial management side. Absolutely. I mean, and it sounds like a good plan as well from what you're saying. And with this from here on, you know, we see that the land bank is pretty strong that you have. So what is the expansion plan and what's the kind of capex that you will be utilizing for the future growth opportunities? Okay, so if you look at our uh, land bank at all locations, uh, uh, if I can explain you shortly uh, as to how it unfolds, is that uh, once you set up a terminal, there is no opportunity for you to acquire land at a later date because once the terminal starts operating, there is an ecosystem which develops around it. There will be transporters who will set up their businesses. There will be um, uh, uh, repair shops which will come in. There will be offices of shipping lines and uh, 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 custom house agents and freight forwarders which will come in. So you will get landlocked. So that is why you have to start with large investment from the point of view of your future aspirations as far as the size of the land is concerned. So all mm -hmm. places put together, we have something like 330 acres of land which is available with us. Mm -hmm. And with this land, from a design capacity point of view, if we develop the terminals to its full capacity at all these locations, we have ability to do about 1 million TUs by rail as far as the ICT business is concerned. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are operating, we have installed capacity of half of that. So we have an installed capacity of about 
half a million TUs. And currently, we are operating at roughly about 60% of that if we take the laden and empty containers put together. Sir. So we're doing about something like 250 to 280,000 uh, containers per annum. Uh, so once we reach a level of 60, 65, then small parcels of land will get converted from raw land into container yards, warehouses, et cetera, depending on the businesses which are being developed at those locations. So it should be possible for us to go fourfold from our current level without investing in land any further at the existing locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a strong operating model of operating with hub and spoke principle, which is the basic principle of transportation internationally, particularly when you're doing business mm -hmm. to business, large parcel size business. Mm -hmm. So we have one terminal based out of Burgaon, which is also known as ICD mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the terminal in North India, which opts as a North India hub. And then closer to the port at Virangam, we have another hub from where we can distribute cargo or uh, pool in cargo from the three ports. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to reinforce this model further from an operating efficiency point of view, we would need to develop terminals in the hinterland, which are currently, let's say, underserviced or not serviced at all. So there would be some markets which are in NCR, but it's difficult to service those by road, let us say, from our Gurgaon terminal or Faridabad terminal, <laughs> or let's say Ludhiana terminal, which cannot have a reach, say, up to Jammu or beyond that. So we will need to develop smaller satellite terminals which will feed in cargo from there into our Gurgaon terminal from where we can run our mainline service directly to the port. Mm -hmm. so these are the locations that we are currently working on. So there are two active consideration uh, locations uh, which are uh, kind of uh, at uh, close to fruition. So next quarter we should be able to come out with some announcement on that. And the idea is also to uh, develop into the markets which are currently not developed markets. Mm. Uh, we also see a great opportunity of uh, development of domestic business in India. We initially had started with 60% of our total contribution from domestic business. But mm. because Indian railways capacity utilization was so high, the, 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 the speed at which our pri the private container trains on domestic segment used to run, it was not economic. Then the environment of availability of terminals, etc. also was not good enough. So we kind of closed down that business almost to some extent. We're doing 95% exit business and 5% domestic business. But we are mindful of the opportunity which will come in once the uh, existing two plans of dedicated freight corridor, the Eastern dedicated freight corridor and the Western dedicated freight corridor mm -hmm. commission. And there is also a talk about a dedicated freight corridor covering the entire golden quadrilateral connecting the four metros as well as Nagpur at central with the diagonals. So once this happens, there will be a huge capacity available in Indian railway system. That's where the efficiency of domestic business will come in. Mindful of that, we are also looking at other locations which will help us become a full service uh, rail service provider. And uh, the expansion will take place beyond that. So that's that's the growth story that we have in our mind as well as going forward. So, so I would want to interrupt on this front. When we are talking about the dedicated freight corridor as well on the Western and the Eastern line, I think the Western one, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, expected to be operational by calendar year 21. Uh, what is the kind of uh, financial benefit you see as a company? Okay, so... Uh, Delhi, the, currently, the situation is that the, the port of Mundra port, Pipawa port and Navasheva are connected to North India by the conventional network and oh. conventional network is shared between passenger services and freight services. Passenger services are run to schedule. So yeah. the capacity is first earmarked for passenger services and only residual capacity is available for freight services. Yeah. So dedicated freight corridor creates an almost unlimited capacity for transportation of freight uh, trains on these roads particularly on the most congested part of it, which is, let's say, Navasheva, Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad into NCR. Uh, so the dedicated freight corridor will result primarily into three uh, advantages coming to railway system, including us, Indian railways and us put together. It will be possible to run faster trains, it will be possible to run heavier trains, and it will be possible to run longer trains because Indian railways currently have a limit of 686 meters as a standard train length. Mm. Whereas it would be possible for us to run trains of 1300 meters, almost 1.3 kilometers, on the dedicated freight corridor stretch. The rest of the network will continue to be 686 meters. So this gives you an opportunity. Uh, uh, the longer train gives an opportunity to Indian Railway to reduce its operating expense because you will need only one locomotive and one set of crew to run two, two trains. So that reduces their cost of production. That is number one. As far as the heavier part of it and faster part of it, it brings in benefit to us. 
so you get operating leverage because with the same fleet you will be able to do much more business that means that your cost structure will improve because of that it should be possible for you to provide your service at a slightly better price to your customer so your market expands so expansion of market management of better management of costs as well as improving the capacity utilization at the terminals and on the rail side will give us an opportunity to grow much quicker without the dedicated freight corridor it would not possibly would not have been possible so that's the first advantage which comes in second advantage is that the dedicated freight corridor is being built to a higher standard mm. currently the load that we can carry on a given wagon is 61 tons mm. Mm. if we modify the existing wagon fleet then it can go up to 68 tons but there is a huge possibility of increasing it by another 8 uh, uh, tons to go up to 75 76 tons uh, once the new type of wagon which is fit for dedicated freight corridor comes in indian railways is also planning to upgrade its rest of its network to that standard this of course will pan out over a period of next 4 to 5 years once the dedicated freight corridor starts becoming operational in phases but once all these things happen then it should be possible for us to carry much heavier load on a on a per train basis that reduces our cost structure so part of that cost structure would of cost saving would of course be shared with the customer but it should improve our economics currently if you see that economics of container train operators is considered to be a little bit under stress okay. i think some amount of relief would be available there and because there are 19 players and 19 players have brought in almost about 300 train sets there is a huge amount of over capacity like in road transportation sector there is a over capacity of truckers similarly there is kind of over capacity which is there but once dedicated freight corridor comes in higher double stack with on account of heavy load being carried on single wagon is possible it should be possible to expand the market to such a level that the over capacity will go away and over capacity going away would also means at least in the sectors in which we are discounting below our cost prices will firm up so that these are the three advantages which are advantages which are likely to come out of uh, uh, dedicated freight corridor commissioning right so so with this you know uh, to my knowledge we are still cash flow negative by when do you see the company turning cash flow positive uh so if you look at us as from a consolidated point of view we are cash flow positive hmm. uh, i give you the gross numbers as those stand now our uh, annual uh, 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 debt servicing which is required particularly hmm. the rights issue that we did and we paid back uh, uh, a large amount of uh, the outstanding uh, uh, ncds which were payable uh, much later in april 2021 uh, uh, hmm. so we have a situation wherein our annual cash flow for the purpose of servicing of existing loan uh, both companies put together would be of the order of about uh, 80 to 85 crore rupees mm. whereas the combined, combined cash flow uh, of both the companies put together is of the order of about 230 to 240 crore rupees so we have more than covered as far as servicing of debt is concerned point is that we will need capital to grow and that capital to grow has to come out of the money that we make it may mm. be sir it may be kind of taken care of by new debt which will take place but again that debt also has to be paid and it is always better to operate at a certain gear as far as uh, 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 leverage your assets and uh, have a certain amount of debt on your balance sheet uh, it is never a good idea to do business entirely by zero debt company with 100% equity be uh, investment uh, taking care of your capital expenditure requirement so from that point of view improved cash flows growth etc will help us uh, stay uh, on course and uh, our current situation of being cash flow positive will continue and will only improve going forward even if we invest start investing let's say about 65 70 crore rupees every year uh, over a period of next 3 to 5 years for the purpose of improving our uh, terminal network spread so there are these dots on maps that we are have on our mind will increase our uh, network effect also and uh, the, the overall market reach will also improve right so if you have to talk about fy21 understood that the first half was little slow for everyone taking the recovery of the second half into consideration do you think we will be able to even match fy20 or will it be below that okay so without being accused of uh, giving a positive guidance to the no, market correct yeah uh, the idea idea is basically to show only the trend so i think we should be uh, able to match our 2020 uh, performance in fy 2021 uh, given mm-hmm. the kind of firmness that we are seeing in the market uh, in the quarter 2 quarter 3 also has not been very difficult uh, different from that 
so going forward i think uh, uh, this year also the company should be able to uh, uh, post uh, similar numbers in uh, the current year but we still have one more quarter to go and uh, that's almost one fourth of uh, year uh, still staring at us so let's see how it goes right and overall if you have to go to see in terms of fy 22 23 when things start to improve what's the kind of growth that uh, you're looking at so any company normally expects that on account of a uh, market uh, expansion it should be possible possible for that company to grow at double digit at least right. the lower double digit mm-hmm. so we have similar aspirations we have similar plans uh, it depends on three things one is that aggregate demand has to show up unless there is a demand and and we right. are we are a dependent sector we are not the <laughs> sector which direct we are not b2c we are b2c so yeah. unless the business is do well our demand will not improve and and in order to businesses to do well there are two things which need to happen the overall macros have to be very uh, strong and aggregate demand has to behave so we have been, we have seen some amount of weakness in particularly in consumer durables and automobile space in the past so if we if we if we assume that that will be taken care of then it should be possible for us to grow at say about uh, uh, lower two digit growth going forward for the next couple of years it would also result into some amount of uh, uh, below ebitda line uh, expenses going up on account of interest burden going up right. but i think we should be able to take care of it on account merger activity that we planning also combined cash flows put together so i think i think there is a strong case for growth in terms of uh, the logistics business for all of us is concerned absolutely and hoping that all the external factors fall in place for everyone so that all trajectories all business plans are kept hand in hand because that's the only thing i think if with, with what's going around i think even what tomorrow will look like it seems very uncertain for all businesses across so thank you sachin so much for joining us on the show it was a pleasure to speak to you great insights i hope you enjoyed the conversation as well and hoping to see speak to you soon again stay safe Thank you so much Hiral it was a pleasure to uh, uh, meet you on this electronic platform and uh, share our views with Nirmal Bang as well as the audience that it will be addressed to and uh, wish you a very happy new year going forward and let's hope that quarter 4 uh, is good for all of us and we end up the year in the year with a good set of numbers as far as the entire sector is concerned thank you so much absolutely happy new year to you as well thank you so much Thank uh-huh. you.